Okay, here we go. Right. So, Danielle, a chance to claim the league trophy for the first time in Ulster University. Hello and welcome to Athlone Town Stadium for the 2020 Rustler CUFL Women's Premier Division Final between 2018 finalists Ulster University and the holders Maynooth University in what promises to be an enthralling matchup between two of the big guns in women's third level football. Maynooth have a distinguished recent record in the Premier Division showpiece. If they were to win today, they would lift the trophy for the fourth time in just six seasons. To do so, they will have to overcome a... An informed Ulster University team who beat Maynooth by five goals to four in the group stages. Now, Maynooth will need to look out for Republic of Ireland Youth International, Michelle McDade. She managed to score all five of the Ulster University goals when the teams last met. This really is a great contest we have in store. Maynooth, the reigning champions up against Ulster University, who, if they manage a victory here at Athlone Town Stadium, will add their name to the Premier Division Rule of Honour for the very first time. Well, let's take a look then at today's team news. Ulster University include Emma McMaster, who played for Northern Ireland Senior Women in the Pinotar Cup on Tuesday. Naomi Donnan, who starts at left-back, she played against Turkey's under-19s on Tuesday night as well. It's a 4-3-3, employed by coach Danielle McDowell, with Connolly, Beggs and the free-scoring McDade in attack. Quick look then at the Ulster University bench and just three subs named today. Aston Hunter, Lucy Carvel and Zoe McDowell. Maynus starting 11 includes a number who played in last year's final. That experience could prove decisive today. Senior Republic of Ireland international Izzy Atkinson and skipper Sarah McKevitt offer a width on both sides of midfield as manager James O'Callaghan goes 4-4-1-1. Lauren Kelly and Erica Brown will provide the potency in attack. Amongst the subs today then, Kelly Wilson, Sean Rooney, Emma Minnelli and Maeve Keneally. Well, I'm delighted to say I've been joined by the former Athlone Town player and now head of AIT Sport, Gordon Brett. Gordon, this promises to be quite the game, doesn't it? Absolutely, uh, Barry, given that these teams played each other in their group stages and uh, it finished 5-4. Uh, and along the way, as we've seen, um, they've both scored 24 goals in the group stages. Um, conceded very little um, but I suppose just as you read out the team list one thing that struck me was the I suppose lack of depth of substitutes a number of substitutes on the UU team um, you know with a final of this nature um, to only have three players available to change the game when you can use five from seven uh, it's a big pitch um, it's my home stadium here I coach with the Athlone under 13 national squad and it's a massive pitch uh, for any level and uh, just to have only three players might be a telling factor later on Yeah I was speaking to uh, the UU head coach Danielle McDowell earlier in the week and she said that uh, amongst the players that she could call upon it was a very uh, distinct group of players it was quite small it was limited in number and once you get an injury or two well hence why we say she's pretty much down to the bare bones isn't she absolutely uh, an early injury could be a disaster for UU uh, and uh, hopefully that doesn't happen and that, that something like that doesn't affect the, the overall game uh, because you see we like I counted up to almost 14 internationals uh, of some level from 16, 17, 19 senior will be on display today so I mean we really have the cream of colleges football and so I suppose the cream of uh, football from the south and north of the island um, today so hopefully those smaller factors uh, the outside factors factors of depth of squads aren't going to affect a quality game. And Gordon, how much would you read into the fact that in the group phase then, uh, in the games in what's deemed to be the league, that University of Ulster came out on top uh, in that nine goal thriller uh, and five of those goals, I mean it's not often you get that, is it, scored by one Michelle McDade who just so happens to be an underage international for the Republic of Ireland. Well, I suppose if I was the opposition coach and I was James O'Callaghan, I think Michelle McDade would get really well mentioned in their team talk and during the week. So that's something he's going to watch. Like when you've got a player who can score five against your side, uh, I mean, that, that's a devastating kind of a striker to have on your team. So I suppose that's something we, we're going to watch and see what happens and see whether Minute have come up with a policy uh, to stop Michelle. So the players just coming out onto the pitch here at Athlone Town Stadium. It's been a 4G surface for the last year or so, um, and I'm sure you've seen plenty of changes here down the years. 
Absolutely. I played in the at old Atlone Town Stadium for Atlone. And uh, then they transferred over to this stadium and it was a grass pitch. We can see there's a second grass pitch here, but uh, just over 12 months ago, the 4G surface uh, was laid. And I, I have to say, as a coach in the club, it's a revolutionised training, matches, etc. Uh, it's a well-appointed stadium, lovely at stand, uh, very well floodlit. Um, so it's it's for the younger players, the younger generations, it's, it's an inspiring stadium at the moment for uh, local people. Certainly looks apart. There are today's referees, Des McHenry, his assistants then, Damien Jordan, Ulton Beaumont, and the fourth official today for this Rustlers CUFL Women's Premier Division final is Declan Toland. All the pre-match photography being done out there. And just down below us, we can see that prize that today's players are trying to get their hands on, in particular, the Ulster University team, beaten finalists back in 2018. I'm sure, Gordon, that they will want to get over the line. Maynooth, of course, have done it three times in recent seasons. So for the girls in Navy today, it's a big aim. It's a big objective. Absolutely. Just, I suppose, to get that first title is always the hard one. I think uh, teams always, it's like in Gaelic football, they say sometimes you have to lose and all are in the final before you win one. But uh, I think uh, University of Ulster have been through that loss in 2018. So maybe uh, that experience will stand to them today. And Minute, as I say, have three titles going for four in six years, which would be uh, an amazing achievement as well. Two skippers then coming together to take the pre-match toss after the obligatory photograph that's Sarah McKevitt under 19 Republic of Ireland International for Maynooth lifted the trophy last year and scored in last year's semi-final coming up against her opposite uh, number in Neve Connolly master's student in sports management experienced Cliftonville striker formerly of Derry City and it looks as if the two teams will stay as they are. Just a minute or two until we get underway. Yeah, it's a couple uh, of minutes after four. Yeah, um, um, referee Des McHenry Barry, his daughter, actually Vicky, uh, uh, refereed this final. Uh, the, uh, inter actually, the Intervarsity's final here in Atlone about four years ago. So just uh, interesting that he is now, and his, obviously his daughter is younger than him, so interesting that he's got there after his own daughter. Yeah, lovely stat that, lovely. Gordon, thanks very much. Um, in terms of the setup here today, now we've been here for a couple of hours, um, the wind and the rain has been coming in, but it's been incremental. It comes for a while, it goes right now. The conditions are they're pretty good, aren't they? It's pretty ideal. Generally, uh, the uh, wind plays from right to left as you face it on your screens, uh, and it can whip up uh, pretty strong. Uh, as you say, earlier on today, we had a couple of heavy showers and strong wind, but it has settled down a little bit. The corner flags aren't exactly flying off the poles at the moment, so hopefully um, it'll stay kind of relatively calm um, because we, we had a couple of games over the last two weeks here in the stadium, colleges, finals and whatnot, that were I suppose, a little bit ruined by the weather. Well, almost a false start, Cheltenham-esque, but we are underway here at Athlone Town Stadium and Ulster University straight into attack. Maynooth playing in the teal colours today. Fancy kit and an early chance for Teresa Burns of Ulster University to take the throw in, which she does. And that's a good first touch. And a free kick one early on. First action of the game for Ulster University. Samantha Kelly it was. Great first touch there, Gordon. Yeah, and uh, I think first opportunity to test there, but it looks like they're not I'm going to be, i correct myself, I thought they were going to just play it instead of lump it into the box. They've looked at just to switch it a little bit and build play. Naomi Donnan. Well, she go down the line. She does indeed, but a bit of miscommunication with Neve Connolly out the far side. That's a decent start for Ulster University. And uh, certainly been hot on form this season in the group phase they uh, had one defeat the opening game against Letterkenny IT lost by two goals to nil but they've scored so many goals after that they beat UCD by eight goals to one then came that 5-4 win over Maynooth 
And then a 9-0 success, Gordon, against IT Sligo just shows you how there's devastating this Ulster University absolutely. team can be. There's, but there's goals in both teams, uh, and definitely University of Ulster, but to think that both teams scored 24 goals in four group games each, it's 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 ridiculous rate of scoring. So, um, And I think earlier on we mentioned uh, privately, you know, both goalkeepers are uh, internationals in their own right. Uh, I suppose we all tuned in to Anfield last night and saw a tale of two goalkeepers. So uh, it could be really interesting today as to how well the two custodians do. Two minutes gone. Well, let's hope that uh, the goalkeepers today don't have the same luck as Adrian had for Liverpool last night. Here's Connolly out the far side. Tries to get the cross in, but that's resolute defending from Maynooth. And the ball will run for Izzy Atkinson. Flat pass. To her teammate, Jennifer O'Neill. Loses out to Sam Kelly. Chance for Michelle McDade to come forward. Deep cross from McDade early on. And that's well defended. But you can see intent from Ulster University, who have perhaps settled the better in the opening. Almost three minutes here. Just both teams trying to work each other out in the early stages here. You just see with that little clearance there, Barry, how, how far the ball actually carried uh, over the end line and how easy it was to just relieve pressure with a, with a long ball. Uh, but sometimes strikers don't appreciate those balls. It's a, a lot of work to get on the end of them. University of Ulster choose to play the ball out from the back then. It looks like they've run out in the far side. Do you, as a coach then, Ulster University, when they had the ball, the goalkeeper intent on playing what I see as modern football, as opposed to Liverpool way, the former Barcelona way. Is that something that um, that you would uh, uh, I, I find persuade your players to yeah, do? Yeah, I think you find mo at most levels nowadays the two centre backs drop into the box, full backs push on wide, high and wide, um, and teams try to play off in the back. But to counteract that, almost every team now plays a high press. Uh, so I, I find that in a lot of games it's it's very generic at times so it's just if somebody can come up with something different uh, it might just create the chances and, and openings for somebody to get a, a, a couple of chances a foul committed this time by Lauren Kelly it was on Samantha Kelly Sam Kelly has been involved quite a bit recently Irish Cup winner in 2019 with Glen Torin lots of these players know one another either through college's football or through um, the top flights, both sides of the border. In fact, in interesting to note that the Ulster University coach, Danielle McDowell, she's still playing, Gordon, in the top flight for Crusaders. So not only are some of her teammates, uh, like Amy McNeil today, uh, involved, but she plays against a lot of her side today, which must be quite odd very interesting dynamic in that dressing room for sure um, but I'm sure look at these are all top level players they'll be very professional about their job and uh, and I'm sure as, as, as head coach um, uh, Danielle will um, I suppose maybe she won't tell them all her secrets Ulster University then with Amy McNeil tries again that switch out the left hand side but this is strong from Sarah McKevitt we know that she can be dangerous in possession Tends to take a lot of the set plays for Maynooth University. This is better from Maynooth. Emer Gillen comes up from full back to take the throw in. Right the far flank to Lauren Kelly. She's well marshalled. Again, Maynooth win the throw in. I think he's right. I think he's flagged a free kick, actually, Barry. Oh, it's a free yeah. kick out yeah. far side. Yeah. Must have been a bit of pulling of shirts. Perhaps it was a tackle. In any case, Maynooth have a set piece here from which Ulster University need to defend. Looks Izzy like Atkinson. Looks like an in-swinger. Yeah. Izzy Atkinson stood over it. This is difficult for the goalkeeper. And she palms it down, but it's into the net. And the goal scored from Erica Brown in the seventh minute here. And the Ulster University goalkeeper, Kiva Callaghan, well, she couldn't see it under the sun, 
in her eyes. The ball coming into the box. And it was the simplest of tap-ins for Erica Brown, Gordon Brett, in the end. Bread and butter finish, but uh, give credit. It's a decent ball in, difficult one for the keeper to deal with. But Erica Brown does what a striker should do, follows in on those chances and absolutely buried it. But uh, she made, she, I mean, she really got in the right place at the right time as a good striker should. Yeah, it's unfortunate there for Kiva Callaghan, the second-year physiotherapy student at Ulster University. And... Uh, you just need to look up into the sky and you can see that actually she's still putting her hand above her eye. The sun definitely is hitting that part of the pitch. But quite the start here at Athlone Town Stadium for Maynooth University. We take the lead so early on. Of course, trying to win this title for the fourth time in just six seasons at Ulster University. Under the cosh having started pretty brightly, it has to be said. Yeah, uh, Barry, it looked like at the start that uh, uh, Minute, or sorry, that University Ultra had a little bit of territory, but uh, once the uh, ball came, play came down this end, um, one attack, one goal so far, and six minutes played, and we hit the first goal. Yeah, it's difficult. Coach Danielle McDowell, of course, will have set out a game plan. Coming all the way down to Athlone today, uh, headquartered at Jordanstown in County Antrim. And uh, I can see her out and about her technical area now, having a word with Michelle McDade. Pretty early in the game, Gordon. I don't think she'll change things too no, drastically at this point. Just thinking, I probably do want. No, it's, it's too early. Um, there's a long way to go to get the goal back. So... Um, I'm sure they'll stick to their game plan. As you said earlier on, we know they have goals. It's just uh, what might be vital is if if they can get the next goal. That's what's going to be really important. Well, we had a poll on Twitter earlier today as we break for a free kick given by the referee, Des McHenry, against Lauren Kelly. Yeah, today's Twitter poll, uh, we asked uh, who our audience thought today would win the CUFL Premier Division final between Ulster University and Maynooth. And the re results just before kick-off, 55% of you thought that Ulster University would come out on top today. And 45% Maynooth. Plenty of time to go, of course. Hopefully you're enjoying today's coverage. Here's Sam Kelly. Couldn't get the shot away because of some fantastic defending from Kiva Walsh. Just got her foot in on time. And here is Sarah McKevitt. Now she switched flanks. She's come inside momentarily. Chance again for Maynooth to come forward. Brown plays the ball off to Izzy Atkinson. I think what's happened there, Gordon, is that Atkinson and McKevitt have purposely switched flanks. Yep. For the meantime, we know that they are so dangerous out wide. Both can supply a killer ball and both can finish as well. So it's good. Yeah, and I think McKevitt earlier on showed a little bit of pace as well, so uh, they're going to have to keep a really good eye on her. Maybe it's a policy to have, maybe they'll switch regularly enough. Good touch initially by Brown. Rebecca Cargill. So is he Atkinson. Possession. Here's Atkinson. Driving forward inside the 18-yard box. And that's cut out by Amy McNeil. McNeil got across to cover expertly. And we talked about Ulster University coming out of the blocks with determination, with pace as well. But Maynooth, well, they've grown into this match. And that goal from Erica Brown, it certainly looks to have changed the early complexion ball looking for the goal scorer Brown surely a free kick on the far side it's another dangerous moment Barry uh, I'm sure we'll see the second in swinger here if it worked first time they may just try it again yeah the luminous orange boots going all the way out the far side it looks as if it is Izzy Atkinson again. Lauren Kelly's up 
in the box. And waiting to pounce Robin Moore. I haven't seen too much of to date. Atkinson in on top of the goalkeeper again. This time it's better handling from Callaghan. Under-19 international. Plenty of Niffle Premiership experience with Cliftonville. McNeil misplaced pass. Picked up again by Atkinson. Brown up against McNeil. McNeil does well to get a two in. Will the ball run out of play? No, it won't. Atkinson. This is good from Maynooth. Chance to shoot. Again, straight at the goalkeeper. Good hands once more, but it was Emma Byrne this time with the shot. And Maynooth threatening Gordon. Yeah, and uh, just something I picked up on Emma Byrne there for Minute has is just happy to sit in front of her centre backs, pick up some play. She actually won that initial ball to uh, restart the attack, and then she stepped on and got a shot on target. And, and so far, she's she's doing a really good job, just minding her back four, keeping things tight. They're one nil up, um, so maybe that's a job that we'll see her do a lot of today. Well, here come Maynooth. Ball's given away cheaply from Alison McMaster this time. Great three ball looking for Lauren Kelly. Well, that was tremendously inventive. Thumbs up from Kelly. And you can see why, Gordon. That's exactly the pass that you want if you're playing 10 today. Absolutely. It, it split the centre back and the full back. It was perfect, really. And again, I think getting back to conditions, it is a little bit windy. Probably whipped up a little bit since the game started. And that ball probably just overcarried a little bit. Great referee in there, I have to say, Des McHenry. Um, he waited to see uh, Sam Kelly had been fouled. Uh, I like that style of re referee. It was Perluigi Kalina, I think, who originally um, brought that in, let the play flow for a while, and then brought it back when Ulster University didn't get the advantage. So, fair juice. Style of refereeing, I like to see, and I'm sure you as a coach as well like to see the same yeah you want to see if you're going to get any advantage from a situation and fair enough if it gets called back I suppose where people get frustrated is where they don't see consistency in, in, in that kind of system of refereeing but no in fairness today so far he started very well Ulster University had possession through Neve Connolly Maynooth again and Izzy Atkinson she's been terrific early on Jennifer O'Neill goes back to Sophie Lenehan. Great distribution. McEvitt, though, in the wind, couldn't quite take the ball under her spell. Again, I like to see that from the goalkeeper. Not, af not afraid to switch play. Goalkeepers now, Gordon, playing as effectively an old sweeper. Absolutely, they have to be footballers now as well as having uh, good with their hands. Ball looking again for the goal scorer, Erica Brown. Kiva Callahan made the correct decision, made the interception. Again, it's all Maynooth, yeah. 15 minutes in. Yeah, Izzy, Izzy McEvitt or Izzy Atkinson there just showed a little bit of pace to win the ball back. She, she's been very central to everything in the last couple of minutes uh, for Minute and uh, probably a standout player so far. Oh, she's been terrific. You can see her now. She, you know, to play the ball back to her goalkeeper there from almost halfway, yeah. you know, takes a bit of confidence, doesn't it? Absolutely. You need good technique there. Main if win a free kick. Ulster University's Morgan begs Evitt. Can get on her bike here. Down this near flank. Shows the ball to Rebecca Cargill. And that's great defending. A lovely pass down the line. Wasn't much room to work in there. Here's Sam Kelly. And a chance for Ulster University. Connolly. Lovely build up play this to Emma McMaster. Emma McMaster, who played 61 minutes in Tuesday's 2 1 loss against Scotland for Northern Ireland. So some serious talent on show here today. And a through Great ball, chance. Ulster University could be in! Oh, and it's just pulled wide. He did wonder for a moment or two whether Sam Kelly 
had veered off site. Flag stayed down. Yeah. Superb chance, Gordon. Back four lost her shape a little bit, but it was a lovely little ball over the top. You can see that's number 15 there, uh, Semantic Helly, who just got in behind the defence. Uh, Minute probably lost her shape a little bit. One full back pushed on, centre back dropped off, and the space was there. It's a brilliant chance. They may rue that later. Yeah, it was a fantastic through ball and a great opportunity for Sam Kelly. She was actually in the Senior Northern Ireland training squad. And here she is in possession again. Fainted to go one way, went the other. Oh, lovely play from Sam Kelly to Connolly. This is better from Ulster University. Just couldn't get the shot away. Alison McMaster and now McEvitt can play the ball over the top to Erica Brown. Can she keep it in? Oh, just too much on it in the end. It's very open, Gordon. We've played that's obviously that's just 17 minutes, but I mean, it's yeah. just end to end, isn't it? Absolutely. You can see why probably the previous game was a 5 4. Uh, it is end to end, and that was a lovely little switch of play there. But you could just see, like, on one end, we had uh, uh, it was young McMaster, um, one of the McMaster's, Allison, who actually tried to play a pass. It was cut out, and suddenly now they're defending back in, the, in their own, uh, back inside their box almost. Yeah, the wind's starting to pick up here at Athlone Town Stadium. And it is a factor. Kelly. Just pushed off it there. By Robin Moore. Now it's with Michelle McDade. McDade. Take it on here again. Here's Beggs. Beggs. Chance to switch play. But again, that's a fantastic tackle from Kiva Walsh. It's the second time. Yeah, in today's game, ah, she stayed down for Ulster University. Morgan Beggs. Opportunity here. Samantha Kelly. McDade. McMaster. Handball. Not sure she, how much she knew about it. Uh, it was Emma Byrne again. The clear we mentioned she's wearing number six, but definitely playing in that six role, uh, Barry. But uh, not sure how much she knew about that. Yeah, the handball rule certainly different from what it was in the past. It set the change again at the end of this season in terms of the interpretation of the shoulder as well. But an opportunity here. It's brought a free kick for Ulster University. Two players stood over it. Samantha Kelly, number 50, and Alison McMaster. Kelly runs over it. McMaster, dipping to the back post. Brilliant. And the flag, unfortunately, for Ulster University is up. That was very nearly an equaliser in the 20th minute. And that was tremendously well worked, it has to be said. Yeah, Barry, I think it was the two Mac Master McMaster sisters that linked up there. Yeah. It was a super ball over the top, a lovely run. Uh, obviously, just straight offside. That was absolutely superb. Just straight ever so slightly for Ulster University. Michelle McDade. Here they come again. McDade. That's a dangerous ball into the box. Under pressure here. Maynooth with that one goal lead. Here's McMaster. That's a lovely ball to McDade again. Can she pick out a cross to the back post? McDade. Lots on it. And Neve Connolly. Well, she just volleyed it wide. Again. Brilliant play from Ulster University. Yeah, Barry, it's probably the first time we've really, in the last couple of minutes, uh, we've seen Michelle McDade get into the game now. They've, they've switched a few balls out wide. She's got a couple of crosses in. She looks very dangerous on the run. Looks to be pacey. Looks like she can get behind the left back there. Um, behind, uh, is it Jennifer O'Neill? Yeah. Um, so I think we need to watch that space, definitely. Yeah, fantastic uh, couple of minutes play from Ulster University. Looks like they have a goal in them. And that goal, their head coach, Danielle McDowell, will be hoping arrives sooner rather than later. Ball just running out of play yet again. Picks up plenty of pace when it goes down that far flank. Maynooth will take a breather. 
Yeah, main Earth scored 10 away to IT Sligo in the group phase. I doubt this will be a 10-0 game either way. Close run thing as well in the semis. They beat UCC by three goals to one. Lauren Kelly scored one of those goals in possession. Now she's hustled off the ball. Looked like it was Alison McMaster. Well, the head coach of Maynooth, Gordon, James O'Callaghan, 22 minutes into this match, midway through the opening half. Do you think he'd be happy at this stage? I think absolutely. You're in the national final, you're 1-0 up. He might not be altogether happy with some of the chances they gave up, but... Uh, they've they've lived under luck a little bit, but it's still one nil, and uh, his his back four are pretty solid so far. Um, we 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 do see uh, a big threat um, from Michelle McDade down this right wing, uh, but so far the back four has remained intact. And as I said already, Emma Byrne is sitting in in front of him there, uh, and she's picking up Sam Kelly, and she's looking to really keep that solid. So uh, you know, I think um, all should be reasonably happy. Well, Munith with that. Single lead, goal lead, scored after seven minutes by Erica Brown. Well, here they come again. It's Sarah McEvitt. And the referee has given the decision to Ulster University. We have never won this title. Played IT Carlo in the 2018 final at Oriel Park. Losing by one goal to nil. Here comes Morgan Beggs looking to pick up possession. McMaster tries to turn. And again, McEvitt in the way. Now, just before that, Gordon, Sir McEvitt. Picked up possession, tried the switch or play out the far side to Izzy Atkinson. Certainly a lot of creativity between those two players. There's been some lovely composed play today. Both sides trying to get it down and pass it. Um, and I say the first goal came obviously from a free kick, but um, really some of the play has been composed, um, constructive. So hopefully it'll continue. I think we're going to see a really good game as this goes on. Moore. Long ball looking for Brown. She's been. A real thorn in the Ulster University side to date. Here's McMaster. This is out for Ulster University. McNeil. And Maynooth will pick up possession. Unfortunately for Ulster University, Naomi Dunnan skews the ball out of play on halfway. I'm glad to see that both sides... I had a couple of players down early in the game. And 22 started, still out there. As Brown gives chase for Maynooth. Brown against McNeil. And this is a tussle we've seen from the first minute in this game. McNeil comes out on top on this occasion. And that's one we need to keep an eye on. Throw in goes the way of Maynooth yet again. Izzy Atkinson, Shelbourne player. Back to Emer Gillen. This Rustler CUFL Women's Premier Division final. 47 universities and colleges entering competitions governed by the three affiliate bodies. And this one of the platinum finals that every player, Gordon, as you know yourself, wants to get to. Absolutely. When you get to a final, it's all about winning. Um, at the moment, uh, very little between the teams. Just that one goal. But in terms of play, it's been even enough. Both teams have had plenty of opportunities to, to get into the opposition box. Um, I'd like to see uh, Sam Kelly on the University of Ulster maybe play a little bit higher up the pitch. Get a little bit closer to uh, Morgan Beggs. Um, she's playing a little bit deeper than maybe you might want a number 10 at times, but she looks dangerous when she's on the ball. But I'd like to see her get the ball a little bit higher McEvitt up the pitch. tries from distance and she scored! Sarah McEvitt 
She saw the opportunity. She saw Kiva Callahan was ever so slightly off her line. She bought the ticket for the lottery. Well, my word, Gordon. Don't save those, Barry. What a goal. You don't save those. She fancied that, yeah. didn't she? I was just saying she bought a ticket for the lottery. <laughs> the ticket yeah. came up trumps, didn't it? Absolutely fantastic second goal yeah. from Maynooth University from Sarah McEvitt. Team Mount United player. Actually plays under James O'Callaghan for her club and for her university. The goalkeeper without shining the light on her, Gordon. Is there anything that she could have done? Possibly when it's from that far out, maybe you'd expect a little bit more, but really, it's, as I say, it was, it was right in the top corner. It was a difficult one. There's a good breeze behind that. There's a plenty of velocity on the shot, but uh, maybe we'll see as the game goes on when it changes around the ends. The weather has had an effect on both goals, I think, but it's a brilliant strike. You take nothing away there. Take absolutely nothing away. Well, you could see, couldn't you, that she was sizing it up from the moment she set the ball down. And uh, with uh, the fact that Kiva Callahan had uh, the sun in her eyes for the first goal and the wind seems to be with Maynooth, she fancied the chances as Sam Kelly takes a shot on goal for Ulster University. They now find themselves 2-0 down here with a quarter of an hour to go until the break. It's a long way back. Absolutely, and particularly when you haven't won this trophy before, sometimes if doubts set, set in, uh, it might get it very hard. And again, they really can't afford to concede again. I think the game is gone if they do. But uh, as we know, they, they have a threat. They have a threat. They just need to get one in, 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 the, in the net. Free kick this for the first time this afternoon. McMaster is up top. She's joined Beggs and Kelly is also making her way towards the 18 yard box through ball here's Beggs well it almost ran to her I think she was wrong footed by the time the ball came through assistant in this near touch line though Gordon yeah, again it's the second line put a flag up last time they actually got the ball in the net and again we've one of the McMaster sisters I think it was Alison this time involved just touched a lovely little ball behind the, the defence but uh, as you say Morgan Beggs just couldn't get a leg on it um, but again the threat is there Barry always the threat is there um, and you get a feeling that Ulster will score I think it's Jennifer O'Neill he looks to have taken a slight knock to the face there looks as if she'll be able to continue she's okay it's a difficult time for sport Gordon don't want to labour on it of course but yep. news today that um, a lot of sporting activity starting to be postponed due to uh, the ongoing threat of the coronavirus yep. here comes McDade and that's well cut out runs to Kelly Kelly oh. Well, that's lovely technique there. It's, it's an unbelievable strike. A couple of minutes ago, we did speak about the threat of Samantha Kelly, and that's where we need to see her get on the ball, is in that final third. It's all well and fine picking it up on the half line, but if you get her into those positions, I think she's a massive threat, uh, and particularly with Beggs just ahead of her, and then that goal machine, Michelle McDade, on the right wing. Um, but that's more of what we need to see from Sam, Sam Kelly. Yeah, that was better from Ulster University. I was just saying in advance of that as well that uh, Michelle McDade has certainly on this right flank offered plenty going forward she can pick out one of her teammates there Ulster University could be in but yeah it's a, it's a strange time Gordon with the threat of cancellations in the pipeline yeah I think um, if this uh, this final had been tomorrow it wouldn't be going ahead um, it looks pretty much like a blanket ban on all activities. Um, OK, we we must obviously err on the side of caution with the public health. So um, we we'll probably have an overload then of sporting activity once um, the threat is lifted. O'Neill. And Kelly couldn't quite take the ball down. She does, though, win a throw in for her team, who find themselves... 2-0 up here, if you've just joined us, 
Maynooth University going ahead. Seven minutes into the game. Goal scored by Eric O'Brien. Kiva Callaghan in the Ulster University goal. Unable to keep the free kick from Sarah McEvitt. Out, palmed it down. And Brown was on hand to notch the opening goal. And then McEvitt getting on the score sheet herself with a quite fantastic free kick from range. Must have been all of 25 yards. I'd say and the rest, absolutely. But uh, yeah, it was a brilliant goal and it's, it's uh, for a cup final. It's, it's fitting of a cup final. Here's Emma McMaster. Third year now at Ulster University. Pumps the ball towards the Maynooth 18 yard box. Runs to Naomi Donnan. Donnan looks for options. Didn't have too many options in the end. McMaster. Oh, lovely footwork. Needed to be quicker though. Izzy Atkinson. Stepped in. She really did put in a telling contribution there, Izzy Atkinson. She has done in the opening 33 minutes here at Athlone Town Stadium. She's been quality, Gordon. Yeah, absolutely. Some brilliant performances all over the pitch, but uh, at the moment, uh, I suppose uh, Minuta standing firm. Very much so. And here's Kelly. If anyone can unlock the main earth back line, it could be Sam Kelly. She's had a couple of efforts just wide. Just hasn't run for Ulster University in today's fixture. They must have come into today's final bubbling on the fact that I had managed to get one over in Maynooth earlier this season. Here's Brown. This is a fantastic run. Inside the 18-yard box, Brown still going. And the Ulster University back line there. Well, they were at six and, s and sevens at times, Gordon. Yeah, but ultimately uh, Rebecca Cargill uh, put in a, a challenge. She just did enough uh, to kind of break the run of. Um, yeah, it was uh, Brown. Uh, sorry, was uh, Brown. Sorry, yeah. of uh, sorry, it was yeah. And uh, the ball just ran into the keeper, but uh, she was it was a telling contribution. Gillen for Maynooth. The ball picked up by Kelly. Back to Gillen. Connolly. Now Beggs has it. What can she do on halfway for Ulster University? McMaster. And again, McMaster just loses out in midfield. To her opposite number, Kelly. Switch of play towards McDade. And that's. I suppose McDade has had a couple of. Really telling crosses, but in terms of chances on goal and having scored five in the earlier matchup between these two, Gordon, she hasn't had a sniff today. Not yet, no, no. As you say, she's been a threat out wide, but uh, maybe something they might need to look at in the second half is maybe play her a little bit more centrally. See, can she get behind the two centre backs? The wind stirs up yet again as Beggs plays the pass to Connolly. McMaster. Now it's with Donnan. First time pass, unfortunately runs out of play. Yeah, it's very noticeable, Barry. The wind has just picked up in the last minute or two, and suddenly the you know the passing has gone a little bit astray. A couple of attempts at switch and play have just come short. So hopefully those conditions settle because uh, there's been nice football so far. I think we lost a the ball there in that last bit of play. I mean it's Another opportunity here to bring the ball forward. McMaster, they're going for the switch, Ulster University, towards McDade. He'll pick it up second time around here. What's impressed me so far, Gordon, is how quick the main earth players are on their Ulster University counterparts. Every time it looks as if Ulster University have a bit of space, particularly in midfield, they're closed down closed oh so down. fast. Yeah, so quickly. Um, I said that starts with their number six. Here's okay. Kelly. Looking for McDade. She'll get it back here, McDade. Decent cover. Cover was 
at the back from Main Earth. It was quality. Yeah, so again, we saw that threat from the, from the wide position from Michelle McDade. A little bit of pace. Cross just didn't quite come off. It was Emma Byrne making that interception. And it needed to be clean. It needed to be good. McMaster trying to get the ball out of her feet. Beggs. That's with Donnan. Cross. Call from keeper Sophie Lenehan. She was in the side. Won the title last year. Lenehan. She's had very little to do today as we see. Let's Another see opportunity here potentially. Callahan. Is she still inside the 18 yard box? I think to be fair to her Gordon. The ball did stay inside the box. Only just. Just about. But it was, it was a brilliant actually... Uh, ball out from Sophie Lenehan in the Manuk goal she, like she found her number 17 there Izzy Atkinson and suddenly uh, they're inside the opposition box almost yeah that ball over the top towards Erica Brown that's been used on more than one occasion today it's definite out that James Callaghan and his team are employing today they definitely know that Erica Brown has the pace to get in behind the Ulster University back line and she's already got her name on the score sheet today in this Rustler COFL Women's Premier Division final Maynooth University leading here by two goals to nil and hoping to add their name to the trophy for a fourth time in six seasons which is quite a remarkable achievement given that it has all happened in recent times, Gordon, before that, they wouldn't have been considered one of the kingpins of women's college football. No. But there's no doubt about it now. They've got very good structures up there. Um, and I think what people sometimes mightn't realise with colleges football is with the turnover of students, it, it can, you could have a really excellent side in one season and you could lose eight of that side. And the following year, you could almost be a relegation threat inside instantly. Uh, and to have that level of consistency is, is something else. McMaster, this is lovely from McMaster inside the area. Oh, goodness me. What an opportunity. It was fantastic build up play from Alison McMaster. Yeah, what an opportunity there, Gordon. Alison McMaster um, working her way into the 18 yard box and. Uh, Will she live to regret that come the end of today's game? She might do, but she's created two excellent chances already and that was her first chance herself and she'll probably be kicking herself. But again, the signs are on that this uh, UU team can score goals and uh, they shouldn't just despair yet. Um, you know, they're playing into a pretty strong breeze and we'll see how that works out for them in the second half when they have that advantage. You were talking there uh, before that opportunity about the turnover of players in college football. Um, as a coach who has coached uh, in that environment. How difficult is it to succession plan? Um, I suppose if you can add two to three players each season, it's a help. Uh, but you really need to be strategic in, in the positions that you recruit. Uh, and it's not always easy. Um, people choose courses primarily based on academic uh, um, reasons and uh, okay football and scholarships are important but uh, you really have to be strategic and plan at least maybe two seasons ahead sometimes well that only goes to emphasize how good an achievement it has been from the coaching staff at main earth champions of the premier D division in 2015 2017 again last year the two nil up here in the 2020 final and uh, that just doesn't come by luck no Barry Prendable has a good team Barry's a development officer up in Minute and uh, he's a very good coaching team around him well structured well resourced um, you know they have a men's team that play intermediate football played an intermediate cup final I think and um, so they're, they're doing something right up there leading here then by two goals to nil Brown and McKevitt on the score sheet in Today's final, Ulster University, their head coach, Danielle McDowell, on the touchline. And uh, plenty to ponder for her, for her half-time team talk in particular. 
Uh, they have had decent opportunities. Uh, that, in a way, will please Danielle. However, she knows um, they've got just over 45 minutes here to to get back in touch with Maynooth. Uh, before half time, Gordon would be the ideal time to get a goal. Absolutely, here's a chance here. Here's a chance for Kelly. Samantha Kelly! Oh, did that just brush the crossbar? My goodness, she's got in again on that trusty left foot of hers. She just couldn't keep the effort down. Yeah, she wasn't far off there. And again, Alison McWalter a little bit deeper got on the ball this time and, and created a little bit of play. Ball in behind the defence. And uh, Sam Kelly, it's her second kind of rasper of a shot that's just cleared the crossbar. Uh, they are getting closer, uh, Barry. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, you just wonder with the amount of chances that Ulster University are getting. They haven't gone in. It'll come to fruition for them. Here's McTate. Again, that's fantastic. Maynooth defending. And again, it's from Emma Byrne. That's great play. Pressure from Ulster University. But here, down the other end, comes the galloping McEvitt. That's lovely footwork from McEvitt. Takes a chance to shoot again. A little too far out this time. She's done it once today. I think Barry in the, in the wider scheme of things, overall, you, you have actually been the more creative team in the final third. Uh, you know, both goals came from free kick situations. Um, and uh, actually, Minute are, are struggling to kind of create a lot in behind that um, UU defence. Here comes McDade. Heard a lot about Michelle McDade for today's final. And she's still going, Michelle McDade. And she pick out a teammate, Kelly. Heavy first touch, Connolly. Another opportunity comes and goes for Ulster University. And just as we were talking about the creativity. Ulster University continue to muster chances still haven't managed to make one count but in spite of that they look the more creative of the two teams but Gordon set pieces on the day they can be so telling and coaches you know you can set your team up particularly teams that are you have tall players coming up from the back and such like to take their opportunity from set pieces and they can really hurt you and that's yeah. what Maynooth have done today yeah sometimes that's just where the margins are in cup finals but I'll tell you even though they're 2-0 up uh, Maynooth might be the ones very glad of this half time whistle and it's just going to come at the wrong time for Ulster I think because they are very much in the ascendancy and on top and have had all the chances in the last 20-25 minutes there's going to be a minimum of one minute at a time here it's a chance for Ulster University it could be in here oh what a fantastic challenge last day an unbelievable piece of defending actually you know when you really need your defenders to stand up well, was, uh, Quiva Walsh actually back in there doing, uh, doing the business that, that was a fantastic tackle Samantha Kelly has the corner kick can also University get a goal back here on the stroke of half time done in and it it's in good. from the left back Naomi done in and they rush all the way back to halfway and this could be crucial Terrific from Ulster University. Gordon, how crucial could that goal be? Oh, Come the end of the 19 minutes going in at half time yeah, that, that changes the complexity of the team talk doesn't completely. it completely I was just about to say I mean 15 seconds left in the in the one minute of added time and uh it's a it's an unbelievable Philip for uh, for UU to bring into the dressing room and the mentality of Minute having not held out. We said a couple of minutes ago that they really needed half time to come. They were under massive pressure. UU didn't need it to come, but they'll be a lot happier now having got that goal back. It's it's it, we're set up for a brilliant second half here. Yeah, three goals in the opening half. Then the first of those came uh, after just seven minutes. Erica Brown showing instinctive forward play. Oh, unbelievable <laughs> anytime you get a goal from a defender uh, you'll take it but uh, again set piece three goals from set pieces uh, we talked about how vital they are in any game at any level and uh, 
Now I'm really looking forward to the second half because I think um, that wind could whip up even further and we'll just see how you, you might utilise it. Yeah, at half-time then, uh, it is Ulster University who trail Maynooth University by two goals to one. The goal scored by Erica Brown for Maynooth. A fantastic long-range free kick on 27 minutes scored by Sarah McKevitt made it 2-0. Ulster University have dominated the chances here at Athlone Town Stadium. Sam Kelly has had a couple of those. So has Emma McMaster and her sister Alison McMaster who fired just wide five minutes before the break but in stoppage time at the end of the first half came a goal that you have to say Ulster University deserved uh, there was a miss kick in the run up to that, a corner kick from Sam Kelly, Naomi Dunn on the left back was up uh, from full back and she has reduced the arrears here at half time in the Ruster CUFL Women's Premier Division final it's Ulster University 1, it's Maynooth University 2 
Stadium. We're at halftime. Ulster University trail Maynooth by two goals to one. Three goals in an enthralling first half. One that, in terms of chances, Ulster University dominated, but they fell behind seven minutes in when Erica Brown pounced on a bit of a goalkeeping mistake from Kiva Callaghan. Sarah McKevitt doubled the lead for Maynooth. Uh, that goal coming from well, all of 30 yards on 27 minutes and then one minute into added time. Naomi Donnan pulled the goal back for Ulster University and uh, Gordon Brett, who's with me, Gordon, uh, that is more than a lifeline, isn't it? Absolutely. It was just what they needed. We thought the halftime break was going to come just uh, while they're really in the ascendancy for the last 15 minutes of that half. They got the goal they needed. As we said, conditions have varied here during the game and uh, they really look like they have a strong wind on their backs in this half and we'll just see what happens and how Minute maybe change their game Minute used that wind a little bit to try and get behind uh, the University of Ulster in the first half but they don't have that option now so it'll just be interesting to see yeah, The Rustlers CUFL Women's Premier Division Final Maynooth going all out today to win it for the fourth time in six seasons Ulster University yet to get their name on the trophy and 45 minutes to go here as the referee blows early on, the ball seemed to hit Morgan Beggs uh, directly square in the face. Is that blood I see coming from her nose, unfortunately? That's a difficult one to take, Gordon, so that's early in the second half. Yeah, especially in a cold day, that's a, that's a really hard one to take, but um, I, I'm sure she'll, she'll be up and fine in a couple of minutes. And I think the game has flowed generally so well. We haven't seen Des McHenry, the referee, very often. That's always a good sign that you're not talking about the ref. The game has flowed. He's had some very good attacking football. As you know, we've had three goals from set pieces, and I think we're going to have a really, really good second half here. Just in terms of the teams, I haven't managed to spot any substitutions made by either manager. So a run through then, Maynooth. Um, in goal, Sophie Lenehan. Maynooth in the teal colours. Uh, across the back, then they have Imer Gillen. Gemma Berry, Kiva Walsh and Jennifer O'Neill. In midfield, Sarah McKevitt, the captain, and Izzy Atkinson have been continually switching flank. Robin Moore and Emma Byrne complete that midfield. And then up top, Erica Brown and Lauren Kelly for Ulster University. Kiva Callaghan start, starts in goal. Uh, across the back line then we have Naomi Donnan who played in Tuesday for Northern Ireland's under 19 Amy McNeil Teresa Burns and Rebecca Cargill in midfield Sam Kelly who's gone so close on a couple of occasions in today's game uh, she plays alongside Alison McMaster and Emma McMaster the two McMaster sisters and Neve Connolly Morgan Beggs and Michelle McDade plays in attack out the right flank now Michelle McDade Gordon scored five goals when these sides last met. She she was dangerous in the opening half. Uh, but one comment that you made kind of stands out. Uh, and we'll see if Danielle McDowell, the head coach of Ulster University, is going to, I suppose, employ her slightly differently in the second half. Yeah, I think we felt, having looked at the game, that she might be more of a threat in a central position. But then again, they're back in the game. And I suppose we spoke about the dynamic and the kind of conversation that both dressing rooms would have before that goal. And uh, I think um, Ulster don't need to change anything, actually, even though they're behind, because they're, they're the team that were playing all the football. Emer Gillen wins the throw in as Morgan Beggs. We can still see Beggs getting treatment. And that is a blow to the nose that she's taken. And it's ice cold here at Athlone Town Stadium. The wind blowing time and time again. Sam Kelly tries to make inroads towards the main earth box. Connolly. She'll need to be quick here. On the left back, Jennifer O'Neill. Free kick. And that will ease the pressure on Maynooth. Look on as uh, Morgan begs. She's been off the pitch now for a couple of minutes, Gordon. And what I would say is this uh, kind of puts in mind the fact that Ulster University have only three changes on the bench. They yeah. could potentially name seven but due to injuries and... A lot, a lot else besides they only have three subs. Yeah, I think uh, we said at the, the top of your programme that uh, 
really they didn't need to have to make a change for an injury uh, so hopefully that won't come to pass because uh, it gives them the option of three tactical changes at least afterwards but uh, if they have to make them because of an injury be a, a, a bitter blow Kelly to Neve Connolly Connolly cuts inside Gillen Connolly well she had little or no support up there you could see that she was trying to arc the ball towards her teammate in Michelle McDade. It just didn't happen. Oh, and they had to be on their toes to Ulster University this time around. Erica Brown, the pacey Erica Brown. And uh, Ulster University, Gordon, they need to be careful. They conceded so early in this game. And Maynooth having, I suppose, been dominated in terms of chances they looked comfortable for about 10 15 minutes in the first half and uh, Ulster University given that they had the impetus going into half time they want to start here with a bang don't they absolutely and I think I suppose Manute will try not to concede for early keep things compact like they did as you say for the first 15 minutes of the first half but just as the half wore on uh, University of Ulster seemed to find their feet um, you know Alison McWalter started to dictate a few things uh, Sam Kelly you know as you mentioned already Michelle McDade they all kind of seem to be able to create little chances get balls behind and we see there's good news uh, Mor Morgan Beggs is back on the pitch anyway hopefully she's fine and she'll, she'll um, she's well able to continue but uh, yeah Ulster don't need to change very much they've started pretty well again in the second half but we just saw that little threat of a long ball from Manute in behind the defence uh, looking for Erica Brown and she'd be lethal if she got behind that uh, University of Ulster defence she's already scored her confidence is going to be up so that's a really interesting second half is indeed here, here is Atkinson he started the first half so very well is he Atkinson player who has been in the senior Republic of Ireland side He's just 16, used in a match against Norway. Certainly a quality player. Yeah, and she switched from right to left and back to left again, I think. And uh, and, and a lot of times she's, p she's appeared in the centre of midfield and tried to get on the ball. So, uh, And she is pacey. If if um, she gets on and gets behind that University of Ulster defence, she will do damage too. Well, I think James O'Callaghan, the coach, having... Uh, had that experience of being in charge of not only this side but P-Mount as well um, he has a lot of the girls in both teams and he'll know all about them they could be in here opportunity for McMaster again for Ulster University and she'll fire the ball back across and here it comes their sister McMaster and Ulster University they have Gordon as we thought they would do they've come out looking to score that equalising goal the ball running to Alison McMaster and it was her sister Emma McMaster who was through on goal momentarily but for that stop by Sophie Linehan Kelly well Danielle McDull's half time team talk seems to have done the trick Ulster University for the moment though Maynooth holding that slender lead McKevitt unable to keep the ball in got a shot there of James O'Callaghan down below on the Maynooth bench very experienced as far as college's football goes Gordon what do you think he said at half time yeah I think look at his, his team talk definitely changed obviously in, in injury time of the first half uh, they really need to, to not concede early in this half, batting down the hatches. But have we seen, they really do seem to be trying to drop the ball just in behind that University, University of Ulster defence and seeking to get them turned and push the play up. Um, but I'd like to see them get the ball down a little bit more because they're, they're playing into a fairly stiff breeze at this stage. Um, but as you said, University of Ulster have come back out and they've picked up where they left off, I think. It looks as if Gemma Berry may have twisted an ankle certainly as soon as it happened Morgan Beggs who was giving chase for Ulster University looked back to see if the main if player was okay doesn't look too clever Gordon 
It doesn't, but yet they haven't sent anybody out to warm up yet. Just, uh, but as you say, it doesn't look that good right now. Hopefully, she'll be okay. Well, in that space, both sets of players taking the opportunity to get plenty of fluids on board. The coach is out talking to their charges as well as that. And the game plans certainly being tested. She's still down, mm. is Gemma Berry. Yeah, She's an there experienced is some concern player. There. Yeah, Republic of Ireland under 19 international previously. Experienced Camogue as well. A soccer player. There is concern, plenty of it down there. And let's just hope Gemma, having had that bit of treatment, is able to continue. Plenty of concern being shown down on the Athlone Town pitch. And Gordon, you can see why. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's the second time we've had concern for a player now. Morgan Beggs, I see her, her nose is still packed. Um, just to stop the blood, she must have got a, a serious smack earlier on. And uh, now we look like it. This looks like it might be a little bit more serious. This could be a match ending injury uh, for Gemma. Well, as the stoppage in play happens, probably time again to say we're lucky today to be watching one of the football games that's going ahead looks as if we are going to go into a period uh, unprecedented in my lifetime where sporting fixtures become very um you know they drift into the background really gordon the 2020 kelly cup final um which was due which is due uh in waterford at the end of the month the likes of that that may yeah. well be under pressure yeah I think the last one we saw anything like this was the, the foot and mouth situation a number of years ago but uh, this seems to be taken a lot more serious um, and we will be going into a significant period of rest I suppose for teams And Callahan just shake his head a minute ago uh, and he's talking to some of his other players and I, I just wonder whether Gemma's game is done for today uh, it'd be a massive blow yeah it would be such a shame She's uh, made a couple of telling interventions to deny Ulster University in the match. As we see the clock continues to tick on. 56 and a half minutes and we've been stopped for, must be about three to four minutes now, Gordon. Um, stretcher has come out. They've opted to carry Jim off at the end of the day and well, there's surely no way she's going to be able to continue in today's game. Yeah, she's in considerable pain there, unfortunately. So hopefully it's not anything long-term or too serious. You've got a shot there of Alison McMaster. And you can see how cool it is. All the players trying to, to keep warm by folding their arms and some of them running up and down on the spot. Still haven't made the change though. Maynooth. Deliberations going on as McMaster fires the ball across towards McDade. McDade up against Jennifer O'Neill. McDade, it's quality play by McDade. Lovely footwork. And again, defending was good initially by Emma Byrne. Yeah, it looks like Emma has dropped into that centre half position for the moment in, uh, in Gemma Barry's absence. Holster University sense they could get back on level terms here. That's lovely skill again by McMaster. Plays to Emma McMaster. Through ball looking for Neve Connolly. Will she catch up with it? Connolly again try to send the ball across the six yard box and Emma Byrne there once more. Maynooth under a considerable degree of pressure. Yeah, we've just over the half hour left, Barry and uh, Again, it is all you, you. They really are on top. McMaster. Still haven't cleared it. Emma McMaster. And in the end, it was Alison McMaster with the volley. Change being readied. You can see on the near touchline. So you get another look at that volley. Technique was good. The goalkeeper, Sophie Lenehan, saw it every inch of the way. 
Yeah, it's good technique though. She got it on target. And uh, again, she has been a threat throughout the game. Uh, both of the McMaster sisters have, have really shown up and done really well today, Barry. So, um, but uh, here's the substitution now. Yeah, Gemma Barry, confirmation. She has been replaced by Lauren Killer. Interesting to see where Lauren slots in to James O'Callaghan's plans. Somewhat slow in making the change once it was made, given that uh, the play was interrupted, Gordon, for three or four minutes. Am I being a little hypercritical? Yeah. Well, I suppose there was a long delay, and uh, you would have expected that they had enough time to get a, a player warmed up uh, just on the chance that, that uh, Gemma was going to have to leave the field of play. Uh, but, but they're back to the full complement now. As we see, um, Ember Byrne, who's been doing really well as a number six for, for Manu today, has dropped into that right centre-back position. And uh, Lauren Keeler has come on to number 12. And it looks like she's she's playing somewhere in the midfield, maybe on the right side. We just haven't seen her settle into a position yet. She's only just on. Yeah, it's certainly Ulster University in the navy colours here in the ascendancy as Lauren Kelly drops in to take off possession for Main Nuth. Good ball over the top again looking for Erica Bryant. Cover is from McNeil. Good turn from Izzy Atkinson. Can she get the shot away on that preferred left foot of hers? The answer is no and Sam Kelly has possession to Donnan, the goal scorer for Ulster University. I don't know whether, Gordon, it's the impact of both the substitution, the wind as well, and the fact that Ulster University, they created so much come the end of that opening half. They look as if they could score any time here. Absolutely. Uh, the, the already more creative team throughout this 60 minutes or so we've played. And... Uh, they just need to keep um, alert at the back too because Minute, I feel, are this type of team that could hit you on the break, drop a ball behind, uh, and they have that number nine there, Erica Brown, uh, Brown, who we already said we think she could be lethal, I think, in, in, in that kind of a role, just playing on the counter-attack. But absolutely, University of Ulster, on top football-wise, on top of chances. But uh, we saw again last night, and you watched that Anfield, Liverpool dominated the game but lost. Yeah, it's football at the end of the day. And as a long-suffering Liverpool fan myself, I feel your pain. Absolutely. Lauren Kelly, some nice uh, dribbling skills. Out the far side by Kelly. And here's McMaster to Kelly. Kelly has Neve Connolly, master student in sports man management with her. And she skips past Emer Gillen. Comes back off the Ulster University player. Yeah, throw in to Maynooth. You can see Ulster University have three pretty much key players in there, Gordon. And once they get the ball, everyone starts to bomb forward. Absolutely. Uh, Sam Kelly has picked up a lot of ball and switched play effectively in the second half. Uh, they do seem to try and uh, hit it wide to McDaid when they get it here. Uh, but they haven't just managed to get her into a play very much in the second half. But um, again, the, the real football threat is coming from the University of Ulster. Yeah, it's a good point that you made, though, with regards to minus nine, Erica Brown. She's playing such a high line. Um, and one single moment or lack of concentration from Ulster University. And I can sense she'll be in. She'll sniff an opportunity and she could if she did do, put this game beyond Ulster University. Absolutely. So she's playing off the shoulder of the last defender at every opportunity. Just waiting that just opportunist in her. I think maybe that'll pay dividends. Maybe not. But uh, she is a threat. We know that. Donnan. Throw to Kelly. Oh, it's just behind Neve Connolly. Just not in the same wavelength in that particular passage of play. Connolly though does well to win it back from Kelly here's the ball over the top McNeil chooses to let the ball drop it's all the way back with Kiva Callaghan good first touch from Kelly she's been out muscled though on this occasion by senior international Emma McMaster and here's Beggs 
haven't seen too much of Morgan Beggs. Referee, I judge that to have been an illegal use of the shoulder. Yeah, uh, this could be a dangerous ball with that little bit of breeze blowing into that goal. Maybe an in swinger with the right foot. Uh, maybe it looks like Emma McMaster is lining up to kind of get on this free kick. And this could be serious danger here. Yeah, Emma McMaster, who can deliver a quality set piece. Sam Kelly was thinking of yeah, joining I'm for the options, but you can just see she's creating space for herself here, Kelly, as well, in the edge of the 18-yard box, yeah. and they've got Savvy to it, Maynooth, but McMaster, what a pull in. Oh, and it's turned into the net! And there is the equaliser for Ulster University. And they can't say that it wasn't coming. Fantastic goal. And it owed mostly to the delivery from McMaster. Fine yes. finish. Whips a lovely ball around that two-person wall. And the final touch there. Just getting confirmation. Yeah, I, I, think, was I, I think it might be a second goal for Naomi Na 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 Dolan. Arriving yeah. in a crowd of players there. Naomi Donnan with the goal. And uh, the left back for the second time in this final has scored against Maynooth University. And having been 2-0 down in this game, Ulster University very much now with their tails up. Emma McMaster's ball into the box is one of those, if you're a goalkeeper, well, do you come, do you stay on your line? In the end, Sophie Linehan chose to stay and it got the slightest of touches and that's all that it required, Gordon. Yeah, again, it's our fourth goal from a set piece. Uh, again, we spoke at length earlier on about how important that can be. But uh, right now, I think for Minute, as a team that are, are really on the back foot, they need to get a hold of the ball in midfield. They need to start getting some combination play, take some pressure off that, that back four, get the ball up this end here, and put a bit of pressure back on the University of Ulster. McMaster sizing up the shoot, and she wins a free kick, and this could be extremely dangerous for Minute. That was quality play. She shaped the shoot instead. She nipped the ball inside and she has won a free kick for Ulster University. Ulster University who are intent on doing things the hard way here. Sam Kelly who stood over this free kick as is Emma McMaster. McMaster. Kelly this time hits the wall. Falls to McMaster. Flag is up. And the flag is up on the far side. And it's just wave after wave of attack from Ulster University. And the same protagonist, Gordon, Emma McMaster and Sam Kelly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the set pieces have worked for both teams today. And Minute will be very glad that the uh, that, uh, offside flag went up. Yeah, Minute haven't offered too much in this second period. They are playing against the wind in this Rustlers CUFL Women's Premier Division final. Yeah, I think uh, at this stage it was a boxing match. I said there was Slugger's chance still because they do have that threat of getting in behind uh, and, and playing on the break. But uh, at the moment, it really is all you, you. Kelly. McMaster to Connolly. Oh, it's a quality challenge from Sarah McEvitt. It needed to be. Yeah, and that's a kind of that's the kind of grit that Maynooth need right now. They really do know they do need to batten down the hatches. They need a kind of bit of leadership to say somebody with that bit of courage to get on the ball and start to pass the ball and maybe bring their team back into the game and you know get a foothold again because at the moment they really are just it's it's a it's a it's a rear guard action, it's all defensive work. Here's Kelly. Lovely skill from Kelly. Sam Kelly, she's gone past three. Cuts the ball back. He's trying to feed Alison McMaster. Yeah, Izzy Atkinson did really well there to get in and defend, I think it was. And here comes this counter. We talked about Warren Kelly, though. Barged off it. Illegally, says the referee. Professional defending from 
Rebecca Cargo, nonetheless, to buy her team time to regroup. Yeah, absolutely. To be fair to um, the, the defence there, like sometimes when you're so much in the ascendancy up the other end of the pitch, you, uh, concentration can go a little bit. But so far, University of Ulster have been really vigilant at the back in this half. Need to be on their guard here. The Ulster University is Brown. He has and continues to be a constant menace up there, doesn't she, Erica Brown? It's just, just if you put the ball in the mixer, she's in there, she's working hard, she's really looking to create something, and she's going to create it almost by herself at the moment. But as I say, they're still in the game, though, Manute. They are under pressure, but they still have a chance. Is the Atkinson, the assistant on the far side. He quite rightly blues for a free kick. Is that the first booking of the afternoon? Certainly haven't seen him. You yeah, just wonder, Barry, as well, whether maybe James O'Callaghan or Danielle are looking at further substitutions. Uh, we've had the substitution of Gemma Barry, but that was due to injury. Uh, you know, maybe around this time, 20 minutes to go, they might look to change things up just a little bit, but we don't see any signs of that to happen just yet. I think that might have been Michelle McDade, who had a word or two and ended up in the referee's notebook. Maynooth had led here by two goals to nil. Erica Brown and Sarah McKevitt with that wonderful free kick just short of the half hour mark. But two goals from Naomi Donnan. She played earlier this week for Northern Ireland's under 19. She's in possession now against Turkey. And what a week, Gordon, it's been for her. Absolutely. You know, played international level, then come back down, factoring the fatigue, maybe a little bit of travel, uh, and then to score twice from left back in a, in a national final is no mean feat. Um, I know later on we'll be looking at player of the match awards, and she has to be in her thoughts at the moment, uh, along with a few other uh, UU players. Yeah, definitely, but plenty of time remaining. We have 19 minutes of normal time there, thereabouts, plus the stoppage, considerable stoppage time. You'd have to say probably about five minutes to be added on uh, just for the injury to Gemma Berry alone. And, of course, we wish her all the very best. Um, Morgan Beggs, uh, who took an early blow to her face for UU early in the second half. She's been able to continue... And there's just been that one change with Lauren Keeler coming on for Gemma Berry. Giving chase at the far side as Michelle McDade certainly didn't want to give up there. And Maynooth just look out of ideas momentarily. And you do sense that it may well be one of those one balls over the top, but they need to work it. Lauren Kelly certainly is wanting to take up responsibility here in midfield. Number 10. She doesn't get the ball as Emer Gillen loses out to McMaster. Left footed this time. Couldn't pick out McDeod on the far side. And here comes Izzy Atkinson. Atkinson. She's having to come inside to Lauren Kelly. Certainly two of Manus playmakers. Here's McMaster. Alison McMaster still going. She's had that fantastic run in the first half when she could have and should have scored. Will she get another chance of that nature? Teresa Burns tries to play the pass to Izzy Atkinson. Unusual ball, that one, given the wind. Unusual as well for a defender to be wearing number 11, Gordon. Absolutely, but uh, that probably is a left winger originally maybe and just likes that number 11, but she, she tried that left foot of pass and the wind just caught a little bit uh, and left her team under a little bit of pressure because uh, you, you now really are pressing. Done it. Kelly could be in here. Quality from Kelly, yeah. Sam Kelly! And she has turned this game on its head. Fantastic through ball towards Samantha Kelly. And she has looked dangerous this entire game at the Athlone Town Stadium. And Ulster University 
having trailed by two goals to nil, have turned this match around. Fantastic finish, great opportunism. And Ulster University, they could well be having their name etched on the trophy for the first time. It's some turnaround, uh, Barry. Two goals down with a minute to go to half time. Now with about 16 minutes plus, well, some considerable stoppages to be 3 2 up. Uh, but just reward for Sam Kelly for all her excellent play today to get that goal she didn't give up on it it was a decent ball over the top she just got there ahead of the keeper and Emma Byrne couldn't keep it out one thing Gordon I have to mention again the contribution that the wind might have played there with the ball over the top the wind is quite significantly blowing and might have held the ball up where Sophie Linehan might have thought that it might have bounced off the surface and come on through into her hands yeah this is it look we said at the outset that conditions could dictate a lot on this game um, but look at University of Ulster now 3-2 up what a turnaround and uh, it's interesting to see now what the mindset is like I mean sitting back it's easy for us up here we should say you you yeah keep doing what you're doing uh, but you know with the mentality sometimes in a game you go ahead almost the telling ball round the corner to get in Erica Brown once more and that's the play that Ulster University have become a little bit more adept at defending but quite the turnaround for a side who trailed by two goals to nil the main earth mentality now they know they need at least another goal and Gordon you mentioned they're for Ulster University now they've got their noses just slightly in front is there a temptation to shut up shop ever so slightly? Yeah, absolutely. That that's that's something that they're going to have to. And sometimes it, it just happens naturally on the pitch. Just takes one or two players to suddenly just drop off, not press on, not pass the ball as quickly, uh, and just maybe go a little bit more direct. And suddenly you're giving the ball back to the opposition. Um, so we'll we'll see that how, how that pans out in the next couple of minutes. But now minute again, like we said, they have to get a foothold. They have to start getting up the pitch here and trying to control the ball. Uh, they, when they do get possession they don't seem to be able to hold on to it long enough to kind of take pressure off shot there of Samantha Kelly she is in possession now and we talked about the potential for players of the match the candidates and uh, you know she's an assist to her name and now a goal as well Gordon so um, certainly she's got to be up there for me absolutely she's worked very hard off the ball also today uh, earlier on in the game we found uh, we, she dropped deep got on it and we felt that if we could get her a little bit higher up the pitch she felt there was a goal in her and as we saw with that run uh, she was absolutely lethal with the finish and uh, she's definitely someone we'll be talking about later on Cody left foot does Sam Kelly and a lady who her coach Danielle McDowell tells me was in the Senior Northern Ireland International Training Squad this season and certainly somebody who Kenny Shields is looking at as a potential yeah. for that senior squad. I mean, this is a brilliant shop window uh, for footballers. Um, the, you know, players that play in third level football, both male and female, um, they're playing a really high standard. Uh, some of the play has been excellent, but definitely uh, Sam Kelly is definitely, definitely able to play at a higher level for sure. Ulster University have slowed play in the last couple of minutes, and well, you can't blame them. 3-2 in front now. Just under 13 minutes of regulation time remaining. If they were to get a fourth goal here, it could be game over for Maynooth. Erica Brown isn't wanting that to happen. That was a difficult ball there, Gordon, aimed at yeah. Neve Connolly, who tried to chick, take it on the chest. But uh, I'm, no. not, I'm not sure who could have <laughs> controlled that, but just again... You could just see the defence at the University of Ulster. Um, they're really giving Erica Brown no change, and she does need support. She needs players to get up to her. Uh, a lot of the ball, she's fighting for scraps all the time. This kind of stuff here now, she's working hard to hold it, but she's not got a whole lot of help around her. And defensively, University of Ulster have been really strong. Here's Morgan Beggs, picked out by Sam Kelly. Can try to win corner kick. She's trying to entice the main of defender to give away the free kick in the end. Maynooth through Emer Gillen to extremely well, but no, it's a really good point that you make, Gordon, about Erica Brown and uh, 
you've got to say if you're a defender and you're trying to keep Erica Brown out and she's picking up the ball and halfway facing her own goal happy days job done yeah and, and it's it's a 3v1 situation most times uh, you know um, we, we you know, Izzy Atkinson is out wide in the left but it's almost impossible in the conditions to switch the ball that far from this side of the pitch so uh, it is a 3v1 for Erica and uh, she's getting little or no change there yeah Izzy who started the game um, and was such a big part of it hasn't really got into the match in this second half and that's due in part to the wind it's difficult to keep the ball and to enact that switch of play this is good defending that's very competent play at the back by Emma Byrne yeah, this is the ball we're looking for for Erica now Erica. this is where we think she might get some change yeah, that's quality defending again from Emma McNeil. Back after a leg break. Last season. McMaster. This could run nicely for McDade. Just too much on it in the end. And Sophie Linehan will pick it up for Maynooth. James O'Callaghan barking orders from the touchline might he be tempted to make another change or he's going to have to try to do something different with the shape of the team you know he has to throw bodies forward to try and get a goal get back into this game also McMaster to McDade no change though in that tackle Jennifer O'Neill has done well and she wins a throw in out the far side so Ulster University beaten 2018 finalists for the Premier Division title, a title that has eluded the ladies to date and they're only 10 minutes plus what could be an additional 5, 6, 7 could be 17 minutes in totality but they're certainly so close to getting their name on that roll of honour and they would deserve it for today's performance yeah, I think at this stage, very you know, Manute have they've kept that rigid four at the back. They probably need to push on, go go three at the back, push four into midfield, and push the right players right on. Maybe just try and get some support into Erica Brown, and um, just see can they shake things up. You know, just change the stimulus, get a different response maybe. But uh, at the moment, it's uh, it looks like it's you. You are going to be the uh, winners of this um, this cup. Yeah, I've yet to know the telling chance for Maynooth in the second half and that in itself tells a story second half in which you you have scored twice trailing 2-1 at the break Naomi Donnan got her second goal second from inside the six yard box but she showed great awareness she was instinctive as well in getting her two goals today as was Samantha Kelly in making the run and what could prove to be the eventual winning goal here today. That's if we don't have any more set pieces. Have been well presented today by Emma McMaster, Ulster University's number four, senior international who played over an hour in Northern Ireland's game against Scotland on Tuesday. So. She's certainly not one to shirk responsibility and she's about to take this free kick again and it could spell danger once more. McMaster. They're all up from midfield. Leave Connolly. McMaster. McDade. That was the first chance she's had for a shot today. Michelle McDade. First year student. And one has a big future in the game. It's a lovely little layoff uh, just there by um, the, the second McMass sister, Alison. Uh, really very well aware of what was around her and set that a nice little chance up for Michelle McDade. She just didn't catch it properly. Yeah, Alison McMaster scored four goals in the semi final as Ulster University beat IT Carlo by just the eight goals to nil. Just eight, yeah. I said both teams came in with 24 goals each in the qualifying, and again, uh, 
you know, if there's five goals in this final, uh, pretty much uh, set pieces have been the, the way forward today. But um, yeah, it's um, it's been a good final so far. Here is Lauren Kelly. There's nothing given for Maynooth University today. It's been quite the turnaround from Danielle McDowell's team. And she must be absolutely enthralled by the fact that her team, having been 2 0 down, has showed all the character that she knows that these girls have. She plays against them in the Niffle top flight. And they might be in here again. Connolly, great cut back to McMaster. Oh, and that was a chance. To surely put the game well beyond Maynooth. Yeah, that was that was game over again. A lovely little ball sli slide rule ball played by Sam Kelly. I think it was Doyle that pulled it back and, and uh, uh, McMaster just over the bar. But that was game over that went in. But uh, I suppose we wondered a couple of minutes ago were you you going to set uh, set back uh, sit back Barry? But they haven't. They're pushing. They're still trying to get that extra goal. Uh, and probably good policy because it, there's no point in them sitting back and, and letting Manu come on to them. Um, yeah, well, you have to applaud that approach, don't you? Um, they could easily have chosen to, you know, even bring on an extra defender, uh, have someone drop out of midfield, drop somebody from attack into midfield and to bolster that up. But instead, they've just kept going wave after wave of attack. Yeah, um, no, they've been brave. And, uh, you know, they've, they've, they've got the rewards for that bravery. Um, that could have been really wrapped it up. But at the moment, uh, we can't really see a way back from Minute at the moment. Not just at this point in time, as the clock runs down for Maynooth University. They came into today's game looking to lift the trophy for a fourth time in six seasons. And Ulster University, this could be their time. Sam Kelly, oh what skill. That was terrific. She really is showing all her wide range of skills there. And she seems to have relaxed even more in the second half and really got into her own game. Um, she's, been, um, she's been really, really impressive. And you can see the international pedigree there. Uh, that little bit of play was just brilliant. Lovely pirouette on the ball. Great to see. Now, Maynooth, what can you deliver in the last three minutes of normal time? And any stoppage time that's added on. Can we see extra time? One opportunity. And I certainly wouldn't bank against Erica Brown. She's been joined up top now. Gordon, you can see by Lauren Kelly. Yeah. Uh, she has a little bit of help now. But they just need to get a hold of the ball in midfield. And start getting the ball into those two. But uh, I see Lauren has gone out wide now to try and drop in and get the ball. But... Uh, and we have our number seven pushed on, uh, Sarah McKevitt. Uh, she scored today as well. Maybe she'll fancy herself for a second second goal, but they're back defending. Does well, McDade. Right the far flank to keep the ball in. Tried to <laughs> cut it back to Sam Kelly, who lost her footing for once. And here comes Izzy Atkinson. Yeah, powerful run by Izzy, but just, just fouled, and I suppose... This was not quite a professional foul, but it had to be done to stop that run. Here's Robin Moore. McKevitt. Again, nice skill from the Maynooth midfielder. This is lovely. Great play towards Lauren Kelly. And a foul committed on the edge of the 18-yard box. Now this will spell danger for Ulster University and it's a perfect opportunity for Maynooth to draw level did you feel she needed to make that challenge I don't think she needed to but you know sometimes in finals people get a little bit anxious this is this is going to be a big moment in this game if um, University of Ulster can see out this free kick situation you'd imagine they're, they should win the game it's the skipper it's Sarah McKevitt who stood over this for Maynooth. And they're throwing just about everyone forward. McKevitt. McKevitt. Wall does well. Follow up 
was from Kiva Walsh. And it again was blocked by the Ulster University Chance defenders. And that's great from combination of McDade and McMaster. McDade goes past McKevitt. Superb challenge. And you have to applaud McKevitt, who lost the ball initially and made her way back inside her own 18-yard box to deny Michelle McDade. Yeah, she worked ever so hard to get back there. Um, but again, Minute, we're, we're expecting. We haven't seen uh, injury time to go up just yet, but we could, be, we could be looking at five minutes here with the two injuries that you mentioned already, Barry. Um, I don't see any activity either for late substitutions. So He's Struggling to get the ball up over halfway. Maynooth for the meantime. As Connolly gives chase. Connolly back to Samantha Kelly. And the ball is now with Donnan. This is good ball retention by Ulster University. And I see seven minutes of additional play about to be added on. I think that's just about fair given the nature of the injury to Jim Berry. Here comes McDade. McDade. Out the far flank. McDade cuts inside. Goalkeeper does well. And Maynooth will clear. It'll be a throw in on the far side to Ulster University. Here about to make a change. It looks as if Danielle McDowell is about to bring on Lucy Carville. He's standing waiting to come on. McDade. That was quality play. The last move, that is, by McDade. And uh, just what you want to see, Gordon, your number nine doing. Yeah, they're just they're, they're just trying to keep keep possession, keep Minute pushed right back. Um, they're so close to their first title. Um, they don't seem to be showing any signs of nerves. They went 3-2 up, and as we said, we're giving great credit for continuing to push forward and try and get another goal. But uh, this lady here, uh, Sam Kelly, has been really instrumental in this second half. She's got on the ball, she's kept possession, she's played some lovely balls out wide here to uh, her, her captain, Neve Connolly. And um, at the moment, it looks like they're going to claim a title. Now, we still have about five and a half minutes left of injury time, so anything can happen. Yeah, it's Neve Connolly who's come off, and you could see as she tried to make her way down uh, the wing in that last move that she'd lost a bit of pace she has obviously picked up um, a bit of an injury there so it's an enforced change uh, but a chance for Lucy Carvel. so we're into the third minute now of time added on of which there will be seven and Maynooth well it'll be a difficult one for Maynooth to take the side who led by two goals to nil here. Ulster University trying to put some more breathing space between themselves and the champions of the Premier Division in 2015 2017. And last year, it looks as if that rain is about to come to an end. Yeah, I think, do you know what? Just looking at the game, standing back, uh, very. we have to give some credit. We talked a lot about University of Ulster pushing forward and being creative, but really their back four have done so well in the second half as well. They haven't allowed Minute to get that ball into Erica Brown. They physically dominated her as much as they could, uh, and that's the platform as well that this um, possible success has been built on. Yeah, they've done really well to nullify uh, Sarah McKevitt and in particular uh, Izzy Atkinson who started so well for Maynooth and that is absolute credit to both the coaching staff and uh, also to the players out there of Ulster University. So we have the player of the match and today the player of the match for the CUFL Women's Premier Division Final. The award goes to 
Samantha Kelly, player of the match and quite deservedly so, providing the assist for Naomi Donnan's goal that reduced the arrears to 2-1 just in stoppage time at the end of the first half. And Samantha Kelly, should things stay this way, has scored the winning goal in this cup final, which yeah. is quite a feat, Gordon. Yeah, very just as you as you announced her as a matter, a matter of player of the match, she she just showed her worth to the team off the ball. She ran about 25 yards to close down the minute defence. And, and now University Ultra have possession because of what she's just done. And here's a so chance. It could be in here, Michelle McDade. And again, she's been tonight. Just hasn't been her day today, Michelle McDade. Plenty of industry. Plenty of fortitude. But there's just no way past Sophie Lenehan for Michelle McDade today. Yeah, but we said Sam Kelly, absolutely very deserving winner of this award. And we saw that chance came as a result of her extra hard work. And, and this is in kind of the 95th minute, uh, having worked so hard. Here comes Jennifer O'Neill. That's great defending. And that's McMaster back there, Alison McMaster. Defending as if their lives depended on it. There may still be time for a chance here for Renute if they can just get that ball in the box. They're just going to have to lump it, I think, at this stage because they haven't created a whole lot in the second half and they're just going to have to get it behind the defence. Kiva Walsh. That looks to be overhit. And it will be ushered. Well, will it be ushered out of play? There, there you get an indication as to how much the wind is still howling here. The majority of onlookers here including those in the pitch thought that was going to run out absolutely with the wind just held it up a little bit and uh, again uh, Barry we've just over a minute left Minute, can they just fashion that one chance if they get it they're going to have to be clinical otherwise uh, they won't be claiming their fourth uh, title but uh, they'll have to watch UU pick up their first title well Sam Kelly has been instrumental what else does she need to do Gordon yeah. to Get into that yeah. mindset of Kenny Shields. What else does she need to do? I don't know. I hope Kenny's watching because uh, even just again, we saw her. She won the ball back. She hasn't stopped working hard. You know, she's obviously got goals in her locker. She's been very creative. She's had some lovely touches with the outside of her left foot in the second half. Um, she has to be really in the mix for, for more senior uh, international honours. Well, the clock certainly running down for Maynooth half a minute left and they need to throw everything at this yeah, Sophie Linehan James O'Callaghan asked for the ball just to be launched to get put it forward and but it's difficult into that heavy uh, strong wind here's Lauren Kelly as she's done so many times in this game taking the ball forward great ball from Lauren Kelly Theresa Burns will do the defending and Izzy Atkinson just runs away from yeah, just Izzy. Couldn't, couldn't get her foot around it, but it was an excellent piece of play. It just showed, you know, uh, Minute for the first time in a long time, got in behind that University Vulture defence. All of a sudden we've got two balls on the pitch, but Gordon looks as if the game might be up for Main Earth here. Stoppage time, seven minutes and 26 seconds of it we've had. And the referee... I'm sure he's thinking about calling a halt to today's proceedings. And there is the first time that Ulster University are going to get their hands on the CUFL Rustlers Women's Premier Division trophy. And how they deserve it. They have come from two goals down here today. And their match winner combination of Naomi Donnan, who scored twice, having been away with Northern Ireland under-19s. Uh, to play against Turkey in midweek. She's returned with a brace, but the player of the match has gone to Samantha Kelly. She orchestrated things in midfield for Ulster University, uh, who's come back owed a lot to her performance here today. Gordon, it was quite sensational. It was a brilliant game, brilliant performance from Samantha Kelly, plus her teammates. They started very well in the first 10, 15 minutes. They fell behind to that set, those two set-piece goals. Uh, probably took a little confidence knock for a while. 
uh, got the goal that was vital that goal just before half time to get back to 2-1 changed that whole I suppose dynamic and spirit in the dressing room they came back out and they dominated the second half they've done so well they're very very deserving winners of this trophy well Ulster University deny Maynooth the fourth title in six seasons uh, Maynooth played such a big part in this match they must have thought that another title was headed their direction early goals from Eric O'Brien and then a long range Sarah McEvitt free kick give them a bit of breathing space at 2-0 but Ulster University scored at a critical moment one minute into stoppage time at the end of the first half uh, and with that uh, we will go uh, down pitch side and to my colleague Will Downing Will Absolutely delighted. All the team was superb. I'm just buzzing like. <laughs> I'm being 2 0 down as well, and things not quite going your way early on. Yeah, I mean, I think we just showed character like, and went in the game 3 2, so I think we really deserved it. And I mean, what does it mean after reaching so many finals in recent years to have finally <laughs> come out good? Finally, our year, and now Neve Conley, congratulate! <laughs> Nice one. And what a feeling will it be to finally get your hands on the league trophy in a few minutes? Unbelievable. Can't wait. <laughs> Look forward to it. Barry. So a fantastic and a historic win for Ulster University. OK, the league ceremony. Who tried in vain back in 2018 to lift this title. Danielle McDowell was... Uh, an interested party at that stage, Alan Taggart, uh, from memory, was in charge of the team. Danielle plays uh, both with and against many of these players. 33 years of age, uh, uh, it's quite shameful I asked her her, her age when I was speaking to her earlier uh, in the week. But she's still playing and playing well for Crusaders. And she knows everything about these players, Gordon. And uh, that is why that they've come here to, to win this final today. This, another look Hi, at the opening goal. And you can see that the okay, sun yeah. very much in the eyes of the Ulster University Hi, folks, goalkeeper. Um, Set it on a plate for uh, well Eric O'Brien. And she made no mistake. You would not expect okay, her sure. to miss from there. Well done, girls. Then Sarah McEvitt, 27 minutes into the match. She fancied her chances. What a sweet strike that was. Into the top corner. That gave Maynooth University a 2-0 lead here. And... Well, Ulster University, having dominated at that stage, looked out of it. But then came Sam Kelly's free kick. One minute in the stoppage time. A fluff from Michelle McDiet. And Donnan cut inside, making no mistake from just outside. Six yards. They've been very helpful to us. I want to mention as well the Cuffle Committee and the WSCI Committee. They organised these competitions throughout the season, third level season. Uh, I want to thank them specifically, um, only for them. Put a lot of hard work in behind the scenes um, to get these things, get to this point in the, se in the, in the season. Um, I want to thank the match officials. I want to ask them to come forward and I'll present with your medals. Thanks, lads. Appreciate it. Then came the onslaught from Ulster University. McMaster with that lovely free kick. Attempted done and into yet another forward run. And the left back managed to get herself a brace today. Certain candidate for player of the match, but Sam Kelly, she took that award. Oh, what a winning goal we had. And so fitting for the CUFL Rustlers Women's Premier Division title that she nipped in to score what has proved to be the winning goal. Now you can see the disappointment etched on the face of the Maynooth players who, Gordon, 
just wasn't to be for them today. It wasn't, no, because uh, I was just thinking, I was looking down through the list of the UU players and there wasn't a bad performance amongst the, the group. I mean, the two McMaster girls were instrumental in the win. Um, you know, the, do, the defenders who we mentioned near the end of the game really shut out that um, that attack of Minute as they push forward, uh, particularly in the last 15 minutes when they did try to get balls in behind them. But uh, Morgan Beggs worked very hard up front despite, uh, you know, it looked like a nasty face injury. Um, Samantha Kelly obviously Sports. player of the match, you know, Teresa Burns, all these players, Neve Connolly who probably, you know, went off with a couple of minutes to go. But uh, Naomi Donlan at left back scores twice in the national final uh, and she's just pipped to probably player of the match by her teammate, um, so Sam Kelly. Yeah, nice Sam Kelly about to receive that Player of the Match award and such a fitting player to win it today. Liddy who has been involved in Kenny Shields' thoughts and I would say we'll see her in the future in Northern Ireland Senior International Colours. be very surprised if we didn't. Here come the rest of the Ulster University team, Michelle McDade and her teammates Morgan Beggs there who recovered from that blow to the face uh, from the ball and uh, these the moments that you remember for many many years to come these occasions happen sometimes only once in a lifetime and to have this medal and ultimately the trophy it's going to be handed in a second to Neve Connolly. This is something that these girls will never forget. Yeah, I mean it's brilliant for them to look back now. I mean this this uh, the game has been kind of obviously gone out in a live stream. They'll see the highlights. Uh, back in the day, Barry, I won a college's cup with it. Lone Institute of Technology as captain in 1998. We've won photograph of the team with a fun camera, <laughs> cardboard camera. Well, here is that photograph happening right at this minute in time. And the cup being handed over to the captain of Ulster University, Neve Connolly. And Ulster University get their name on the trophy for the first time in their history. A fine comeback win here at Athlone Town Stadium. They trailed by two goals to nil. And they'll go back to County Antrim with a fantastic, a fine, a 3-2 win. And a win that will live long in the memory of not only the players, the supporters who have made their way here, their manager, and just about everyone in third level football. They deserved it. Yeah, Barry, what I like about colleges football is these, these guys, as you mentioned, they all play with each other at club and some of them play against each other. They play with each other at international level. Their manager plays and against them, uh, with and against them. And they have a connection for life now because of this success. I, I was lucky to win a college's cup back in back in my time in college. And I'm, we're all connected, those players. We never, some of us never played together and might, some of us haven't even, you know, we're still in contact on social media. But this is so important. It's, it's, college's football is a really, really great way to bind and connect people and uh, no, I'm really happy now that the University of Ulster won their first title Yeah, Neve Connolly a Masters student in sports management uh, perhaps what you might deem an elder states person of the team but somebody who leads by example Yeah, there's, there's always pressure on the final year students to win a title Down pitch side now and to Will Dining Eve Connolly, who's with us right now, and I mean, at long last, for the first time ever, Ulster University are league champions. We've been waiting a while. We got to the final two years ago, so we were narrowly beat out, 1-0. Had a point to prove this year. So we did. <laughs> Buzzing. <laughs> and what is it about you and Maynooth that seem to produce high-scoring uh, thrillers? I don't know. They're a quality setup. They're a quality team. Like, you know, give it to them. Had us in the first 20 minutes, you know. But the work the girls put out in behind the scenes, twice a week training, you know, we deserved it at the end of the day. And it's a long season as well. Yeah, it is. But, you know, whenever you want to play football at the top level, you got to do it, you know what I mean? And the fact is, by the way, this is the last game of football being played in the country officially it for three is. weeks. We were waiting them from before, so we were wondering if we're ever going to play. <laughs> but, no, we're buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. You are allowed to celebrate, though, which is still good. Yes, it is. And we will do much, a lot of celebrating later on, trust me. Nice and well done. Let's see if we can get maybe Donan over, because... <laughs> You scored one goal, possibly two in this. It's definitely two, definitely, definitely, two. definitely two. I meant that's what it <laughs> But I mean, that, I mean, that second goal to turn around, you were 2-0 down, then you were braced, 2-2. Yeah, Boston doesn't happen too often, so 
I can't believe it. It's unreal. What does it mean to finally be on the summit of Lul? You keep producing brilliant football. Yeah, it's, it's quality game today. Maynooth gave a good opposition and the best team came out on top, but it was a great, great game. Lovely. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's nice. I just want to speak, and thank you very much for speaking to us, Sarah, um, because runners up today, but I have to ask you about that incredible free kick. That was, what, 25, 30 yards? Yeah, I think um, with the wind behind me, I said I would chance it and hope for the best, hit it a slap, hit the target, and luckily it went in, but I suppose it doesn't mean too much now with the, the loss, but look, still happy to get on the score sheet and whatnot. I know. Um, have you scored many like that before? Couple, a couple. Um, sometimes on the big on the big days, I like to just uh, give it a go and hope for the best. For example, there. So I think I have it in my locker at times. Sometimes, some days it'll end up anywhere, but we'll see. Hopefully, more to come. Yeah, listen, great contest. Commiserations on today, but really well done in the goal. Thanks very much. Nice one. Thanks a million. And uh, it was a glorious, glorious finish. Got to speak to the boss as well, who's taking a few photos here at the moment. She is a one-woman team. Uh, Danielle, congratulations. You've matched the mind of the first league win. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, I can't take any credit for it. The girls have uh, worked extremely hard there today to, to get what I thought was a win we thoroughly deserved. We created probably 10 or 12 chances in the game, and uh, it was looking a little bit like it was going to be one of those days. Um, fair play to Manouf. Um, I think they, they had some very good players today, and um, they showed some really good resilient defending whenever we were, were laying the pressure on. It made for a really good competitive game. I mean, you were 2-0 down, and at that stage... What are you thinking? Because, I mean, 2-0, it's not insurmountable, but you obviously don't want to be 2-0 down. Oh, 100%. We, we were, I was disappointed. Um, I knew that we were, we were going to have to make some, some adjustments and, and have a few harsh words at half-time. Um, I wasn't completely disheartened in the amount, based on the amount of chances that we created throughout the game. You know, we're always going to create chances. We have good creative players. Um, but I think getting the goal back when we did right on the stroke of half time uh, made it a whole lot easier coming back out 2-1 down in the second half as opposed to 2-0. Um, I guess it shows the resolve of the squad to have turned around 2-0 to win 3-2. Yeah, very much so. I mean, the, the girls were disappointed with themselves at halftime. You know, you could see that. Um, we, we, we made a couple of adjustments, G'd them up, but this is a team full of winners. You know, a lot of these girls all play in, in the, the Niffle Premier League in, in Northern Ireland, and, and they're used to winning cups and they're used to winning leagues with, with their clubs. And um, I think that come through today. They're, they really worked for each other and they weren't, they weren't going to stand for being beaten. So um, they've got the too many finals before in UU shirts. What does this mean for Ulster University then? It's massive for the university. I mean, we've just made history with the girls um, winning this particular trophy for the, for the first time. Um, we have a, a performance academy at Ulster University um, in partnership with the IFA, um, and that's really starting to... Um, show the benefits of that program as well as the um, performance sports scholarships that the university offers so these girls are getting fantastic opportunities and, and, and they're starting to um, show on the pitch and, and hopefully give back to the university with uh, uh, bringing the cup home and giving them the accolades. Nice one, congratulations, well deserved. Thank you very much. Thanks there and that is it and actually until the 29th of March in terms of football in Ireland that is it because during this game if you've been caught up in the excitement of it the FAI have announced that all football at all levels in Ireland due to the outbreak of coronavirus will be suspended until March 29th. The likelihood is that all top level competitive football in England will go the same way. Uh, Manchester City against Real Madrid in the Champions League next week, the latest big match to be postponed. Well, what an absolutely dramatic Rustler's COFL Women's Premier Division final we've had. Maynooth 2-0 up, going 2-0 up thanks to one of the most incredible free kicks I think we'll ever see, but Ulster coming back, a terrific victory, and Maynooth in the end blinded by the Northern Lights from Athlone. It's goodbye. Oh yeah, we can hear you.